Now the reason why I'm doing another video on this gauge since I've already done one is last time I didn't show any machining of it. I basically showed you the product after it was done. I thought maybe somebody would be interested in seeing how I do it anyway. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's kind of a simple little project but lots of machining to it. that just a bit of lube and we'll see how it's running and that's running pretty good well this is uh, just a mild steel bar uh, I'm running at uh, 685 rpm we're gonna do a feed rate of uh, five and a half thousandths per revolution and we're going to start off with a uh, 30 thousandths, 60 off the diameter here. Go ahead and set my zero. Dial in 30 and let it rip. As soon as I have the lathe going in the right direction. but uh, I'm not too concerned about the surface finish because I'm just roughing this thing out. We're going to come back with a shear tool later on and drastically improve that finish. And I want to take this down to about uh, 400. So we'll take off uh, another 40 thousandths. This little section down here about a half inch long, I need to take that down to 5 sixteenths, which is a uh, 312 thousandths, so I figured I'd do that now, and we'll go ahead and take uh, our 40 thousandths off the rest of it. Well, I finally located my shear tool. I knew I had one ground and it was buried in a box. But I wanted to show you the profile of this. It's a very simple tool to make. It's only one grind on your uh, high speed steel. But a surface finish like that requires no sanding, no emery, no nothing. Smooth as glass. Now on the small end we're going to be threading that uh, 5 16 24. So we're a few thousandths over. So I'm just going to take off 10. Well, I'm going to be putting a 5 16 24 thread on this little section right here. So with the parting tool, I just put in a little thread relief and we'll move on to uh, threading that right now.
Well, I think what I'm going to do now that uh, we just put the threading on, uh, I need to convert this to a tube. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and drill in maybe uh, two or three inches now that we're concentric with the threads. And then I'm going to, I'm going to take the whole thing out. I'm going to cut one section five inches and the back half of the gauge I'm going to cut in an eight inch section. And then we'll go ahead and drill it out from both sides to uh, turn this into a tube. So let me go ahead and get an 1160 force drill and we'll start poking a hole in this thing. Got an 1160 force drill bit, a uh, long one, six inch. Okay, so we're in there about an inch and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy out of the chuck. We're going to go ahead and cut it into two sections. We'll go ahead and flip this around and continue drilling from the other side until they meet. So we got our five inches and we'll cut it right about there. I'm going to drill and tap this for 5 16 24. So this way I could screw these back together and we have a 14 inch piece again. I think it's a much heavier duty device making it out of solid steel because the bore that I'm putting in there is only 11 64 and dom tubing would be a much larger inside diameter. So this is the way to go with these things in my opinion if you want them to last and not bend if you sit on them or something. So let's take it over to the lathe and we'll go ahead and face that off drill it, tap it, 5 16 24. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the 1164 drill and we're going to take it all the way through this thing and do the uh, larger drill and tap after we're done. Okay, we're all the way through. So we'll go ahead and pull out this uh, 1164. So we'll put in a, a letter I drill bit, which is the tap size for a 5 16 24. And we'll go ahead and drill and tap that in. Well, that's uh, half the gauge complete. We'll move on to the next uh, part here. So on this end here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn that down to uh, 0.3125, which is 5 sixteenths. Uh, basically a repeat of what we did on the other piece. I'm going to go ahead and put a, another thread exactly like this right here. So this way it'll screw into this and we can connect the gauge back together. See how she goes together. Nice.
it's actually not too bad the neural could be a little bit deeper I believe so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank just a little bit more in I'm going to bring it back to the beginning Well, let's take a look at it, shall we? It actually didn't turn out too bad. Well, I went ahead and swapped out the, the live center for a half-dead center. Uh, I actually made this, and it's in another video if you want to check it out. It's good for situations like this where you need to get a tool in and your live center is in the way. So the knurling tool sent the knurl over that, uh, it rolled it over the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and kiss this with a 45 degree and uh, see if we can't clean that up. Well, I don't know. Y'all tell me. I don't think it's absolutely horrible. Well, it certainly makes uh, putting the tool together a little bit easier. Yeah, I think I like that. Off camera, I'm going to go ahead and drill a 1364 hole. I'm going to go ahead and tap it for quarter 20, and then we're going to move on to making the thumb screw for the customer. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since uh, I worked on this. I was waiting on the casings to show up from the customer from the island of Malta, which took a very long time. I've gotten stuff from uh, China quicker. And but, uh, what we need to do is make a set screw. It's going to be very similar to this here, except just a little bit different. We're going to make it out of uh, this chunk of aluminum and then put in our quarter 20 set screw. The little set screw, it's not going to be that large, so we'll use this little chunk. Well, I think where we left off was I was fixing to go ahead and make this, and just as I was about to start, I had a, a viewer stop by. Uh, he had contacted me a couple of days before and wanted to know if he can come by and meet me and check out the shop, maybe see the uh, lathe operate a little bit. So we got distracted. And I told him I had this little part to make, so I went ahead and knocked it out while he was here, but I forgot to film it. But uh, it turned out pretty nice. It's just a little thumb screw. And the next operation I need to do is a little bit of milling. And I need to mill a slot into this bar that extends down about half the diameter of the bar and in about half inch to five eighths of an inch in from this edge. Well this is the little mill drill that I picked up. Uh, I got it at a very reasonable price that's not the permanent home for it but that happens to be where it's at now. So I just wanted to show you the entire thing because the shot that I'm going to show you next is pretty close up but I wanted to show you the little mill. If there's more interest uh, in this little guy I'll do a, a separate video on it. I think I'm going to like having it. It's got a couple of problems that need to be resolved and I'm currently working on that but uh, it's in good enough shape right now to go ahead and mill this little slot. So let me get everything set up and then I'll bring you in and we'll mill off uh, some metal. I'm excited to, to have this little guy. So let me show you the setup that I have here. I've got a tool holder off of the lathe. I've got that strap clamp down to the table. I've got the work mounted up in it and it's a, a secure enough setup for what I need to do here. 
of course to all those professional machinists out there uh, I certainly apologize for the setup but I don't have a milling vise yet and I need to go ahead and get this knocked out so you got to do what you got to do but it's more than rigid enough uh, for this job right here so let's mill a, a slot shall we and to protect the job from the the screws that are in this tool holder I've got this uh, piece of copper about a sixteenth of an inch thick that I went ahead and put up against the side to go ahead and protect it from getting marred up. And we'll put a little oil on there, it can't hurt, right? Well, that pretty much wraps up uh, the milling operation here, so let's take it out and see what we got. Well, let's take a look at the first milling job I've ever done. And I think it turned out pretty good. It's exactly what I needed. A couple of sharp edges, I'll go ahead and get that deburred. We'll chuck this up in the lathe. We'll go ahead and polish this thing all down, and the only thing left to do is to go ahead and drill and tap the casings the customer sent me, which will screw right onto this end here, and sit on this half a shoulder that's left, so this way he can get a set of calipers in at least one jaw of the calipers in right in this slot. That's why we went ahead and did it. Uh, I'll show you that here in a little bit. All right, so that polished up pretty good. I hit it with some 400 and then 1,000 grit and then uh, finished it off with uh, some Scotch-Brite. All right, so, so that pretty much takes care of the, the gauge itself. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the casings, go ahead and drill them, and tap them, uh, what is it, uh, 5 16 24. So Victor, we're fixing to wrap up the last year project and get your gauge out to you. We'll go ahead and drill and tap these 5 16 24 and that'll complete your job, sir. Five sixteenths, twenty-four times four, and what these guys do is they screw right onto the end of this. If I could do it through the camera, and that's a nice tight thread, and that will butt right up against the shoulder, nice and square. And then what the customer does over on his end is he takes the calipers and 
brings him in against the back of the casing so he can measure the overall length of his cartridge. And that's pretty much what the gauge is for. So Okay, well here's all the, uh, the components. Uh, nice little set screw. The machining turned out nice. I'm primarily concerned with the, the quality of the machining, especially for a customer job. So that looks real sharp. Nice grippy surface there. Uh, the milling on the slot turned out really nice. That little mill is going to be uh, quite handy around the shop. So I'm pretty happy with uh, my first milling job ever. So give me a thumbs up down there if uh, you appreciate uh, seeing some milling. We'll be doing a little bit more of that around here. And then this guy screws right in there. And it's going to be a little bit long to be all in the same shot, but uh, there we go. Some good looking threads. Still a little bit of dirt on it. Need to clean that up before I pack it. Nice little knurl on the handle. And a set screw goes right in there. Well, it turned out to be a really nice job. He watched my other video on it, and I mentioned uh, that if anybody wanted one, go ahead and contact me. So if anybody watching this video is interested in one of these, you can contact me at makingsomethingfromnothing at gmail.com and just put in the, the subject OAL gauge and we could talk about it. They're a little bit more expensive than the uh, cheap alternative over on like uh, eBay and some other websites, but this is machined out a half inch uh, solid steel. So there's quite a bit of machining involved in making one of these. So I'd like to do them for $10, but I just can't. And Victor, here's your threaded casings. You call them FF cartridges. Over in my neck of the woods, we call them 308s. But uh, all this will be in the mail to you on Monday. So I appreciate everybody watching, and in the meantime, go out in your shop and make something from nothing.